Hello there and welcome to Can Sanity. Today we're going to be making maple pecan scones and it's March and the sap is flowing in the maple trees and the maple syrup farmers are busy in their sugar bushes making fresh maple syrup. So it's the best time to pick up some fresh maple syrup and do some baking. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start by toasting our pecans. And so I have my frying pan set at medium high and once it's really hot, then I've added my pecans. And uh, so now I'll just stir those around and I'll toast them till they're slightly browned. And that'll take about three to five minutes and uh, then my pecans are toasted and then once that's done I'm going to take them out and I'm going to give them a, a rough chop so that I have um, some smaller pieces rather than pecan halves. Okay so I have three cups of all-purpose flour and to that I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half of baking powder and three quarter teaspoon of salt teaspoon and a half of cinnamon and a third of a cup of brown sugar. Now I normally use dark brown sugar and that gives a, a, a nice rich flavor but I don't happen to have any today so I'm just using light brown sugar. So I'm just going to mix that up. And then I'm going to add to that my butter. Now my butter is I need nine tablespoons of butter, or if you have a scale, which I do, that's four and a half ounces. It's much easier to weigh out butter than to, to get that tablespoon correct. Um, so I like to use weights when it comes to using butter. So that's mixed up enough. And now I'm gonna add my butter. And now this butter I just took out, I had cubed it up as you can see, and I had it in the fridge until just before I'm gonna use it. Because you want your butter to be cold. And so now I'm going to just cut that into my flour mixture and I'm just going to use my pastry cutter. If you don't have one of these, you can just use two knives, but it's actually really worth, worth the investment, <laughs> sorry about that, um, to use a pastry cutter. Now you see I'm just taking out the butter with my hands and it's cold so it's, it's good and even if you freeze the butter for a little bit that, that keeps it really nice and cold. And so I'm just going to cut this in until it's the right consistency and then we'll add the liquid ingredients. Okay, so I've cut in the butter and I've actually got my hands in there and I've squished some of the butter up. That's okay to do that too. And so you just want to have small pieces of butter in there like that. Um, and, and so once you get, you know, about the size of a pea, small pea, then, then that's, that's enough cutting. But like I said, you can get in there with your hands and squish up the, the butter too into just, you know, small pieces like that. So. That's what I do. I kind of get in there with my hands a bit and I also use my pastry cutter. So now we're going to mix up the wet ingredients and add that to the mix. Okay, before we add our wet ingredients to the um, dry ingredients for our scones, we'll also um, chop up our pecans first. So um, these are cool enough that I can, I can chop them. So I'm just roughly chopping them. You could leave them whole but I just like to have the pecans distributed more throughout the scone. So I like to cut them in half, approximately. And so we'll go around and I'll just do that. Okay, so I'm just reusing the bowl that I had my flour measured out in, but I've added two large eggs and I'm gonna add my um, one quarter cup plus a tablespoon of heavy cream one quarter cup plus a tablespoon of dark maple syrup and I like to use dark maple syrup when I'm baking uh, it has the richest flavor most robust flavor and so maple syrup comes in four shades uh, the first is uh, called golden it's the first maple syrup that's produced 
and then the next is amber, then you'll get dark and very dark. And the flavor changes for each shade of maple syrup, and that's produced naturally by the tree. Okay, so now we're gonna add that wet mi mixture to our dry ingredients. And with scones, you really don't want to mix them too much with this type of scone. Um, and because you don't, you, it'll be fluffier if you are lighter if you don't mix it too much. And so we're just going to mix that up with the spatula. And then I'm going to pour it onto um, a paper, a uh, piece of parchment paper. And then I'm just going to form it into a triangle. And if you have a pastry board, and I do, but for uh, simplicity, I just decided today I would just use a piece of par parchment paper to put my dough out onto. So that's mixed enough. So I'm just going to use my hands to just kind of gather it up. I'm not, I don't want to mix this too much. Like I said, it'll be a better texture if I don't overmix it. Oops, I almost forgot my, my pecans. So I'm going to put my pecans in before the wet, but let's just to add those in now. It's kind of like a shaggy dough. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's going to all go together, but it will. Just kind of press it in a little bit like that. And then that's, that's good. And the stuff on your fingers will be <laughs> a little bit wetter. Okay, so now we're going to add, we're going to put that onto our parchment paper. But before we do that, I'm just going to clean off my hands a bit. And uh, then we're just going to pat that out. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my parchment paper and I'm just going to dump my, my dough right onto the parchment paper and I'm just going to press it into a, a triangle, a rough triangle. About nine by nine, eight and a half by eight and a half is good. About one inch thick. Now you can cut that into nine and you can just bake nine squares and then you'll have nice big scones or then you can cut those scones in half before you bake them and then end up with 18. So now you can cut these out and then put, it, put the scones on a parchment lined baking sheet and put them in the fridge and refrigerate them for 30 minutes before you bake them and that will mean that your scones will, won't spread out as much but it's not necessary you can still make them without doing that step so what I do is I just cut down the center like that and then again These will spread, so these will be bigger than this. So if you want smaller scones, and today I'm just going to make some smaller ones, you can just cut those into triangles. And then just put them on your baking sheet. And use a sharp knife to cut. You'll get a much even, more even cut on your scone if you use a really sharp knife.
And I'm going to actually use two baking sheets of paper and try to squeeze these all on one. Now, if you leave them larger, it will take a little bit longer to bake. But if you put them smaller, it, they'll bake quicker. And I have my rack set in my oven in the middle position, and I have the oven preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I have two baking sheets prepared, roughly half on each baking sheet. And um, before I put it in the oven, I'm going to brush it with lightly with some a mixture of uh, heavy cream and maple syrup. And just for fun, I'm going to put one of the baking sheets in my fridge. And I'm going to keep it in the fridge for 30 minutes and chill it. And then let's just see what the difference is between baking them immediately versus chilling them for 30 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush on the maple syrup with cream. Now you can also add some turbinado sugar on top, but I'm just going to put the, um, the maple syrup uh, and cream glaze, let's say, or topping, not glaze, topping on top of the, the scone. So I won't brush the ones that I'm going to put in the fridge for 30 minutes. I'll just brush the ones that I'm going to bake immediately. Okay, so I'm just going to pop these in the oven and bake them for 15 minutes. Okay, so while my scones are baking, I just wanted to show you the difference between the, um, the shades of and grades of maple syrup. So this is the first uh, maple syrup that's produced, and that is the golden. And then you get into the amber here, and then this is the dark, and then that's the very dark. Now the golden would be ideal for making candy. The amber is what we typically use on our pancakes. And then the dark and the very dark are, are what I prefer to use in baking. And, but if you get a chance to get out to the sugar bush and um, test out the maple syrups, uh, go and do it. It's fun and you might find that your palate prefers one grade over the other. Okay, so I have my uh, second set of scones in the oven baking and I thought for fun I would just make a browned butter maple uh, icing glaze for some of the uh, scones. So to do that, just take um, some butter and I'm just going to take about two tablespoons of butter and you're going to cook that down until you see brown flakes in the butter and that just will give the butter a nice nutty flavor and so I just have two tablespoons because I'm not going to put this glaze on all of my scones. I'm just going to let that cook down and until it turns brown. Okay so you can see the butter it's just really percolating there <laughs> and uh, um, it's starting to turn color and so you know, I'll just let that keep cooking until I can start to see brown flakes in the, in the butter. It won't take long, just a couple minutes. And I can see that you know, the uh, well, they're starting to turn brown. And I have my um, element on here, medium high. And I can see in the corners of the pan that there's some dark flecks. Um, I'm just going to let it cook a little bit longer. Okay, so you can see the brown flecks in the butter now. And that's what we want. That's going to have a nice nutty flavor. So I'm going to shut off my element. And, and then I'm going to make the ice, the, uh, the glaze, the maple brown butter glaze. Okay, so I have my brown butter in this glass, glass measuring cup and I have about a cup's worth of icing. I'm just going to add that to my brown butter and then I'm going to use the 
the very dark maple syrup. And I'm just going to add a little bit in right now, about a teaspoon. And I'm just going to blend it. about a tablespoon and now I'm going to add a little bit of cream. Just add a, about a half a teaspoon at a time of heavy cream until I get the right consistency of the glaze. pretty good but I'm gonna add just a little bit more because it doesn't it's it's not a pourable consistency yet but it's pretty, it's pretty close so just a little bit more cream flavor is outstanding. Okay, so these are the scones that I chilled for 30 minutes. These are the scones that I just baked immediately. You can see there's not a huge difference. These ones seem to have risen a little higher. Uh, so if you are not in a rush to eat your scones, then put them in the fridge for 30 uh, minutes. If you really want to get at them, <laughs> bake them right away. So I put the um, glaze that I made, the maple brown butter glaze, in just a baggie. And so you could use pastry bags if you have them, but I just wanted to show you, you could just use a regular Ziploc bag. And what I do is I just take a pair of scissors and I just snip off the end. And these scones are cool, so I'm just going to then just drizzle on some of the glaze. There you go. Okay, so my scones are done and I have all this delicious maple syrup that I can make some other maple flavored delicious treats. And I have to thank my friend Jim Lumston. I did go out to his farm, uh, Lumston Brothers Maple Syrup Farm, uh, to check out how they process and make maple syrup. And I did write a blog about that, so that's on cansanity.com. And so please go and take a look at that blog. And there will be a link there for you to click on to um, check out Thompson Brothers Maple Syrup Farm. And uh, also some delicious recipes for you to try. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.